Hello students, welcome to Veranda IS. From the current affairs of science and technology, in this session we are going to learn about internet via high altitude balloons. The learning objectives of this particular session will be to analyze high altitude balloon internet and then we will examine the features of the loon and then we will explain the challenges faced by the high altitude balloon internet. Friends, the question on this particular section has already been asked by UPSC. So, it, it is again very significant because new types of uh, internet providing like we have seen low earth orbit internet and all those things. These things are changing, evolving. So, in a way internet is, uh, people are even arguing that internet should be fundamental, right? So, in this context, whatever, whatever things they are there to provide the internet to the remotest part of the world becomes significant from the exam's point of view. So let's start by understanding what is high altitude balloon internet. So as the name goes, there will be a balloon and this balloon will be there to provide an internet and obviously by the name high altitude, that means that they are at very higher distance from the earth. So that is the simple meaning of that. But let's see uh, the technicals and all the details about this particular project. So they are known as loon balloons because project loon, this project loon was asked by UPSC was the first high altitude balloon to provide internet service. So it is the internet service provided through the balloon. That means balloon is having the devices and that devices are capable of providing the internet. So it's they are like towers, okay. They are just like towers in the sky. They are size of the tennis court and are composed of common plastic that is polyethylene. They are powered by solar panels and operated from the ground via software. So it is basically what balloon is carrying the, all the instruments in the uh, in the uh, above the surface of the earth. They serve as floating cell towers. That's what I told you. They are like towers, but they are floating cell towers. That means they are floating in the uh, atmosphere, sending internet signals to ground stations and personal devices while in the air. Then further, they float at the height of 60,000 feet to 75,000 feet. And this is very high, like aeroplanes don't fly at this level. So far, they are far above the typical aircraft routes, okay. So, this is simple one, further, they stay in stratosphere, remember this, these balloons are meant for stratosphere for far over 100 days before returning to the earth. So, they are located in the stratosphere and after 100 days they have the chance or they will be brought back around the earth. So, in June 2021, when Cuban government blocked access to the internet, the United States of America announced plans to give internet to Cubans through high altitude balloons. So, see the significance. Like if the government tomorrow bans the internet, these companies or these type of projects can even provide the internet at that places. So that's why we are stressing that internet has become such a fundamental part of our life that we imagining a life without an internet is like an impossible thing. And then this is even overriding the sovereignty of the government. So that is the thing with the internet. Okay. So long standing limits on the rights, food and medical scarcity and the government's weak reaction to the COVID-19 outbreak are all being protested in Cuba and because of these reasons they blocked the internet but then there was an option that we can provide the internet using the balloons or we can simply say high altitude balloon internet. So that was also the news that appeared and because of that we are studying this. So we let's study the features of the loon. Now Alphabet which is a parent company or uh, Google's parent business manufactures them. These balloons, so remember this project Loon or Loon, it is of Google. Okay, Google in the name of its parent company that is Alphabet. These balloons can travel up to 20 kilometer in the stratosphere. Remember this and this is very important for the prelims point of view. Then a Loon balloon is size of tennis court. We have seen that earlier also and is made up out of polyethylene sheets. That is the common plastic. When the Loon balloon is fully inflated, it is size of a small plane. And further, solar panels power the balloon. So obviously, anything will require the energy. You cannot just take the generator of uh, hydrocarbon fuels and all those things. So you're there, obviously, you are you're going to use the solar energy. So, so it will be carrying solar panels so, to, so as to provide the power to the balloons, which, can, uh, which are controlled from the ground by the softwares. Now further features, the balloons broadcast internet down to the ground, allowing even the most remote regions to be connected. Yes, like for example, in African region or in, let's say you want an uh, internet on Mount Everest, how you can get the internet on Mount Everest, like 
are you going to establish a tower on the Mount Everest or then or you can get a set, uh, internet directly through the satellite but that will be very costly. But if you have a balloon which is above the Mount Everest, you can get the internet on the Mount Everest also. So even in the remotest place or even uh, how you are going to provide the internet or create a tower in the mid of an ocean. So all those regions can provide SN, the internet can be provided there. Uh, also at those remote locations by using these type of technologies or specifically we can say using the loon. It provides 4G LT that is long term evolution and the 5G internet connections to the areas it is assigned to. So whatever the areas that come under one particular loon it will be having this type of uh, networks that is 4G LT and 5G internet connection and it can cover 200 times more ground than land based tower, cell towers. See, it's very obvious, it's simple science. See, a tower, let's say, it is able to cover this much amount of area. But if a balloon is in the air, so if we see the path, it will be able to cover more area. It's like the area to, in which it is reaching. That is a, 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 one of the added advantage of this particular project. Now, let's move on to see the challenges of high altitude balloon internet. Now, these challenges are three. There are three major challenges when using this kind of internet. The first one is we require an unused band is needed. So, that is we require unused band. The second one is it is uneconomical. And the third one is the operational difficulties. We will see each of them as we proceed. So, let us begin first with the unused band required. What is unused band required? See, nowadays, whatever is the thing, like we have no spectrum allocations and all those things, whatever services we use. For example, if I use a internet on my mobile, so it has been allocated a particular spectrum, particular bandwidth has been allocated. So that bands cannot be used because uh, that bands are already allocated. So these balloons which are providing the internet, they will be having altogether different frequencies and all those things. So what we will be requiring is an unused band is required. Okay. To broadcast a connection, it would require an unused band of spectrum or radio frequencies and spectrum use is often regulated by the national governments. So that is another hindrance or a challenge into that because spectrums and the rules and regulations regarding the spectrum frequencies all are managed by the governments. But this thing, uh, obviously government will not give up their sovereignty is like by allowing any internet service provider to use the internet in from the space. So overall, we will be requiring unused band rec band is required so that again is a challenge another anyone attempting this would need to locate a free spectrum block that would not be obstructed and then again uh, the challenge is that the government can again even obstruct that if the government is not agreeing they can obstruct this spectrum now the next thing is uh, uneconomical obviously balloons sending the balloons so power energy consumptions all those things will be into uh, involved into here long term balloon or drone powered networks are unlikely to be cost effective then we have operational obstacles like for example other issues include developing algorithms now if there is a balloon now you have to also detect where that balloon is there exactly at that time Okay, and then only you will be able to know what is the problem and what the services are lacking. Like today, if we don't have the internet, what we will do, we will call to the customer care. The customer care will locate the tower, will look into the issues and all those things. Now that has, same thing also has to be done with respect to these balloons also. But then this is really an operational uh, obstacle. So other issues include developing algorithms to accurately map balloon positions, identifying a reasonable approach for dealing with bad weather, resolving the worry about relying on non-renewable resources. So all these are what you can say the challenges for the high altitude balloon internet. Now to summarize what we have learnt, we have learnt high altitude balloon internet, then we have studied the features of the loon and then we studied the high altitude balloon internet's challenge. So with that I hope you have understood whatever we have discussed about the project loon. That's it for this session. See you in another one. Thank you.